What's up guys, JP back at you once again. It's Monday, that means it is time once again for another Shelf by Shelf video. This is the 2017 edition, we're on episode six. Let's roll. So we left off with Chernobyl Diaries. This is a film that's pretty cool. Uh, everybody knows Chernobyl, real life location, suffers from radiation, and uh, this film is pretty fun actually uh, it's it's pretty neat um, I don't every time I think of this one I can never remember it that well but I just know that I like it I've seen it like twice now I think uh, but it looked pretty um, bad when it came out like the previews but ever since then you know I checked it out and I actually really enjoyed it after that we have cherry tree don't know much about this one uh, I just picked it up at a family video because I like the cover and honestly I just needed something to go along with the other title that I had because it was um, two for three dollars or whatever it is a dark sky films release though so sometimes they put out some good stuff next up we have the Chucky killer DVD collection it has Child's Play 2, 3, Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky uh, this is a very famous set everybody knows this set uh, it's really neat um, I've always liked seeing it at you know stores and FYEs and stuff uh, you know I had to eventually buy it on it it was only 10 bucks when I bought it which is such a good deal you know you're paying like 250 a piece for films at that point uh, Child's Play 2 absolutely love Child's Play 3 I actually really like Bride of Chucky I used to like but I don't love anymore and Seed of Chucky I think is absolutely atrocious after that we have <clears throat> Children of the Living Dead. This one is bad. It's a very bad movie put out by Artisan back in the day. Um, it's it's a movie that just is a complete, you know, mess. And uh, it, the only thing cool about it is it does star Tom Savini at the beginning. So that's pretty cool. After that we have Children of the Corn. Classic Stephen King. This is actually the only version of Children of the Corn I own, which is crazy to me. I'm surprised that I've so not picked it up on Blu-ray, because uh, it is it's just one of those awesome, awesome, awesome movies. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Arrow eventually releases this, because I think it's owned by Image Entertainment. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of this cover, but I just love Children of the Corn. It's such a cool movie. Um, just it, It's really a product of its time. You really couldn't do it today, and it be taken as serious. Uh, because, uh, you know, just technology and stuff. But we've covered these films on the podcast before, so if you're interested in all nine reviews, they're on the podcast. After that, we have Children of the Corn 2, The Final Sacrifice, and Children of the Corn 3, Urban Harvest. I remember when this DVD was released, I was so excited about it because Children of the Corn 2 had never been released on DVD before. It's one of those films that uh, just for whatever reason didn't have an official release for the longest time. This was actually the first way you can get it. And they were in the dump bins in Walmart when uh, Echo Bridge Entertainment got the rights to a lot of Miramax slash Dimension films. And uh, they picked a really shitty cover, I'll tell you that. Uh, because that girl is not in the movie and has nothing to do with the movie. Urban Harvest, it's really fun and cheesy, man. I don't know, it's it's one that I actually really like. I'm actually a pretty big fan of the Children of the Corn films in general. Uh, people that have followed me for a while know that, um, even though the, the, a lot of them are terrible. Um, the sixth film set here, it came with uh, Children of the Corn 2, 3, which you guys seen I already have, 4, 5, Fields of Terror, 666, Isaac's Return, and Revelations. Um, most of those are bad, honestly. Uh, a lot of people love Children of the Corn 4, though. Not me. After that, we have Wes Craven's Chiller. Oh, boy. This thing came in, like, a shattered case. Uh, this is... I think this is a public domain film. I've actually never watched this, but this... Just but judging by these screenshots on the back, this transfer is probably awful. I hear it's one of Craven's worst. I've never seen it, though. Uh, then we got Chud, uh, Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers. I've always been a huge fan of this film, but honestly, the last time I watched it, I didn't I love it as much as I normally do, which is kind of weird. I hate when that happens. It's like, okay, I sh probably shouldn't watch Chud again for another, like, ten years so that uh, I don't like it even less if I watch it again anytime soon, but Chud is cool. After that, we have The Church, uh, Michele Sauve, or however the fuck you say his name. Uh, the Church is awesome, Dario Argento collection, uh, yeah, it's like, I guess, sort of like the unofficial, like, Demons 3 or whatever. 
Um, but yeah, the church is is good stuff. I've I've always uh, I've only seen it for the f one time, and it was the first time I seen it was last year, I believe, uh, for Italian Horror Month. After that, we have Christine, John Carpenter classic. I uh, actually um, have had this in the collection for a while. I always avoided this one growing up, and then I finally watched it, and I was like, wow, that was a really well-made movie. It really, really is. It's super well-made. John Carpenter uh, shot so well. It's actually probably one of his better shot films, honestly. And that's saying a lot, because John Carpenter is known for you know, his... Uh, you know, quality and when it comes to shooting a film. Close your eyes. I watched this for 2002 uh, podcast that we did, top 10 in 2002. Uh, man, I didn't really, I didn't really care for it. Um, it's very forgettable in my memory. Uh, Cloverfield. I uh, love Cloverfield. It's actually one of my favorite found footage films. I just think it's so much fun. It's really awesome. It's so cool that this movie came out. It's it's like a giant monster movie, but taken seriously. Uh, after that, we have Clown. I got this as a screener a while ago, and um. Man, I love this movie. If I had watched this the year that it came out, it definitely would have made my top ten. Uh, there's just so much cool stuff going on in this movie. They handle this mythology of clowns like perfect, and it's like a body horror film. It's just so serious. They kill kids in it, which is always a big deal to me. This is a great movie. After that, we have Cold Prey. Uh, I really like Cold Prey. Cold Prey is a is is an awesome slasher film, awesome modern slasher film. Uh, I still want to see the sequels. I hear Cold Prey Two is really awesome, but Cold Prey, Th Prey 3 is actually not even released in the U.S., so I've just been waiting on Cold Prey 2 until I can get it on DVD. Hopefully when Cold Prey 3 gets released, if it ever does. The Collector, um, <clears throat> this one's really good. You know, I avoided this one for a long time because I just thought it was going to be, you know, just a kind of like a Saw ripoff, and I, I didn't realize that it was going to be as cool as it was, but yeah, this movie's awesome. After that, we have Compound Fracture. I've still not watched this, been in the collection for a while, stars Derek Mears and Tyler Mayne, uh, basically Jason and Michael Myers, after that, both in the remakes. Uh, after that we have Contagion, this movie was really cool, I watched this when it came out, when um, the whole Ebola syndrome thing was going on, and uh, yeah man, this was uh, the, or the Ebola outbreak, I don't know if they called it syndrome or not, that's the movie, but... Um, yeah, which really freaked me out. It's like a not really super horror-ish, but it, it, it has horror moments and um, You know, it's a psychological horror type thing uh, Count Yorga vampire never seen it had it in the collection for a little while picked it up super cheap Because I bought the sequel from Scream Factory, so I had to get the original after that we have uh, the Covenant here uh, This is actually a really fun movie. It's actually directed by uh, Rennie Harlan, who has directed like a few horror films, including like Elm Street 4, I think, and maybe uh, Prison as well. I'm not sure. Um, really, it's like over stylized a bit, but it's, it's actually really fun. After that, we have Creature, picked this up $2.95 at Dollar General, never seen it. After that, we have Creep. Um, oh, shit, they're falling. We have Creep. Uh, still not watched this, had it in the collection for a while, but I hear good things. After that, we have Creep Show, which is an awesome movie. Love Creep Show, probably one of the best anthologies of all time. My personal favorite segment is the strange thing that happened to Jordy, whatever, the Stephen King segment. That one is awesome. I love it, and I love they're creeping up on you too. After that, we have Creep Show 2, a uh, classic as well. Um, I think everybody's favorite segment is The Raft, which it was mine, but now it is Old Chief Woodenhead. I love Old Chief Woodenhead, that is a great segment. So, <clears throat> Creepshow 2, and then finally for this part, guys, we have Creepshow 3, which I've never watched. I've heard nothing but bad things. I guess the company that picked this up eventually, or whatever, picked the rights up to the Creepshow films, made this and um, Day of the Dead 2, and I hear they're both awful, so just never got around to watching it, but I will one day. So, with that said, guys, see you guys Friday. You can catch it every Monday and Friday. We do another Shelf by Shelf. Later.